Step on up and get your Taroka reading told. Today we are going to be talking about the Taroka deck and all of the crazy locations that are going to come up by reading this deck. Of course there's going to be a ton of spoilers, players don't watch this, but DMs then want added insight on reading this deck. Go ahead and stick around because there is a lot to cover here. And here we are at the Vistani camp at the Zara pool. So this is but one of many locations that a Taroka reading can happen, as it can happen before the campaign, before your players even arrive to Barovia, and even in the lands of Barovia, it can be done anywhere else. So long as there's anybody that knows how to read the cards and has the cards in their possession, they can go ahead and pull off the reading for the players. So I've already done a full video on this in regards of doing it. You can go ahead and rig it if you're online or in person. And I've talked about all of the individual items. So let's go ahead and just have a quick refresher here. When you're doing that card reading, the first three cards you're going to pull are going to be from the main deck. And specifically the numbered cards. The first card you pull is going to reveal the location of the Tome of Strahd, which is going to give great insight into the one's enemy. The second card you pull is going to reveal the location of a very powerful artifact, the Holy Symbol of Ravenkind, which is going to rebuke the undead and more importantly hold vampires in their place. And the third card is going to reveal the location of the Sun Sword, an extremely powerful item in the hands of pretty much anybody, as it will unleash radiant energy upon your evil foes. So when you go ahead and do this card reading, whether you do it completely random or you go ahead and rig the deck, there is a ton of locations that these places can be at. In this video series, we're going to be talking about the locations and more importantly, why the item is there. So to that, let's go ahead and get started. We start off with One of Swords, Avenger. The treasure lies in a dragon's house, in hands once clean, now corrupted. The item is in the possession of Vladimir Horngard. Located in area 36 here at the top of this manor, your players climb all the way up and there inside they'll see Vladimir sitting upon a throne with a sword in hand who is going to bark out, leave me alone. Your players are going to see that item in his possession right there, but Vladimir is not willing to give up this item. Not without a fight. If your players go ahead and step in, then they're going to be in for the fight of their lives, because not only will they be going against Vladimir, but also all of the undead floating around here. Should your players go ahead and converse about it, Vladimir will go ahead and expout, You will not leave with this item in your possession. Unless... You do something. You restore our honor. You light the beacon of Argenvashtolt. And this gives your players a clear quest. Light the beacon of Argenvashtolt, and that item is in their possession. Now, how do they light that beacon? Well, that's entirely up to you. Do you have to get the skull all the way from the castle back here, or is the dragon skull located somewhere else? Perhaps Baba Saga is using it as a flying device. Two of Swords, Paladin. I see a sleeping prince, a servant of light, and the brother of darkness. The treasure lies with him. The item you seek is currently located inside Sergei's tomb, specifically lying beside Sergei inside of his coffin. So what the heck is this item doing here? Well that's simple. Strahd put it there. And why did Strahd put an incredibly powerful item alongside of his brother? That's because Strahd knows that his body is being warded, and evil creatures have a harder time getting there. So what does that mean? That means Strahd is going to try and corrupt everyone to being evil and thus making it next to impossible for them to go ahead and get that item. And that's powerful symbology there. Your players start off and they may start off as good people, but if they slowly get corrupted over time, then they're going to find that things are harder and harder for them as evil aligned creatures in this campaign have a lot of bad things happen to them. Three of Swords, Soldier. Go to the mountains, climb the white tower guarded by golden knights. The item your players seek is located at the top of a tower right past the Solenka Pass gate, making this an incredibly difficult one to get to. Your players have to overcome the Solenka Pass itself, then they have to go through the gate, and once they get to the top, as they get to the top, there they'll be attacked by a bunch of snow maidens. As your players reach the top of this location, the swirling snow assumes the form of thin young woman. The wind howls, be gone, the treasure is ours. And your players are going to get into a fight with six snow maidens, which are just reflavored specters. And this is an interesting one. Why are these snow maidens obsessed with this one particular item? Once again, because of Strahd. Strahd gave this item to these snow maidens to protect in life. 
but even in death they are sworn to protect this item. Should your players not leave at once, they will be attacked. And after the fight is done, once the last one is defeated, they are swirling in the snow, the characters will magically see that the item appears. Four of Swords, Mercenary. The thing you seek lies with the dead, under mountains of gold. This item is a bit of a troll, as your players have to go to Crypt 31 in the Catacombs. When your players enter this crypt, or at least look inside of this crypt, they'll see that painted along the walls are mounds of gold. But once they step inside, a trap will be sprung, they'll go ahead and fall down, presumably take a bunch of damage, but there at the bottom they'll see the item that they seek. Now the question with this one is, did Strahd purposely place the item down there? Or did whoever died down there have it in their possession and ever since then it's been locked away? I like the idea that a long time ago some adventurers got some of these items and were doing good work. But unfortunately for this individual, they stumbled across this crypt, got a little too greedy, fell down, and that item has been locked away ever since. Five of Swords, Myrmidon. Look for a den of wolves in the hills overlooking the mountain lake. The treasure belongs to Mother Night. Your players will be able to find the item that they seek all the way there in Area 7 of the Werewolf Den. However, the text tells your players that the item belongs to Mother Night. And unfortunately, when your players arrive, they're going to see a pile of loot in addition to their item. And if they do not heed that warning that it belongs to Mother Night, they may very well take it. In which case, a curse will befall on them. And that's really bad because that curse is crippling. If people cannot gain the benefit of a long rest at night, then your player's daytime activities are going to get interrupted by a bunch of sleep. Should your players ask anybody about this, it would make sense that the Werewolves took this from some adventurer oh so long ago and have kept it here, and it now truly does belong to Mother Night. Six of Swords, Berserker. Find the Mad Dog's Crypt. The treasure lies within, beneath blackened bones. This item is truly under lock and key because your players are going to have to fight their way through three hellhounds and a wraith of a ancient general. This is actually a pretty tough one and if players are lower leveled then this could easily wipe them. You need to have a strong group and be at the ready to go ahead and tackle this dangerous event. Now once again I like the idea that Strahd gave this item to the general Grizzlek at some point and Grizzlek held it with him until his dying days and even past his dying days. I like that idea because that's going to give him an incentive to go ahead and defend it and of course kill the players. Seven of Swords, Hooded One. I see a faceless god. He awaits you at the end of a long and winding road, deep in the mountains. Now this is a deadly one. Your players have to go all the way up to the Amber Temple, and once they make their way down, they'll be able to see that faceless god that they've been told about. However, if they approach any closer, that is when the Arcanaloth Nephron is going to strike. And Nephron is an insanely deadly foe. Nephron is currently in a veil of darkness that your players will not be able to see through, and he's also got the high ground. Your players are going to have to overcome a lot of obstacles to try and defeat Nephron here. Thankfully, your players don't have to necessarily kill him. Nephron can be dealt enough damage that he goes ahead and teleports away and turns invisible and runs away from the party. In which case, your players can then go ahead and climb up through the statue and find a decent pile of loot. In there, they will also, of course, find the item that they seek. This item in particular was left at the Amber Temple, but Nephron greedily stashed it away in the statue and is currently waiting for anybody to retrieve it. Eight of Swords, Dictator. I see a throne fit for a king. So this is one of the easier ones your players are going to be able to find because if they know that Castle Ravenloft exists, then they know that there's a throne room there. Once your players make their way into this room, they'll see the item that they seek before them is in fact right behind the chair on that marble dais. It's just simply waiting there. And that's curious. Why would Strahd leave out an item that's insanely detrimental to them right there on the throne? It's because he's confident. Much like I talked about the throne sitting backwards from anyone that would enter, it's the confidence. He knows that the players are so weak that they can't even do anything about it, even if they get that item in their possession. And even more so, if the players get that item in their possession, easy peasy, then it's going to make it all that much sweeter when he steals it away from them. Nine of Swords, Torture. There is a town where all is not well. There you will find a house of corruption, and within, a dark room full of still ghost. So this is a very powerful one. If your players get told this before they arrive to the village of Loki, they hear that all is not well. Then they hear that mantra of all is well. That is immediately going to tip them off that it has something to do with the Burgomaster. Your players will presumably search high and low in the Burgomaster's mansion, 
and the only way they'll be able to find it is if they go all the way up to the attic and each character has a cumulative 20% chance to find the item after one hour searching through the attic. So after a decent amount of time, your players will be able to find it no problem. This item was unfortunately lost and forgotten, much like all the other things in this attic storage. It at some point came into the line of the Velakoviches, but of course simply got locked away. Master of Swords, Warrior. That which you seek lies in the womb of darkness, the devil's lair, the one place to which he must return. A common thing we're seeing with more and more of these cards is that some of them kind of blatantly spell out where the item is, and some of these your players are not going to have a clue until they actually get some type of hint. The item your players seek is located right past Strahd's coffin and is in fact located in that middle alcove there. However, if they start rooting around the place, then unfortunately they're probably going to get jumped by some vampire brides. Now many of the locations Strahd could have hidden an item could have been due to a hubris of sorts, but perhaps he truly thought that his place was safe and he could go ahead and just stash it here no problem. One of stars, transmitter. Go to a place of dizzying heights where the stone itself is alive. The item your players seek is located in a chest. Inside of this chest is actually a bejeweled gold crown worth a ton of money on a silk pillow. But the only key to this chest is located with Cyrus Bellevue. Considering this is an iron chest, I would put the DC to unlock this chest with thieves tools at much higher than the traditional 15. I would make it so your players have to work to open up this chest. And if they simply steal that key from Cyrus, or they go ahead and just start bashing this thing open, go ahead and make it so that they have to work for it. Two of stars, diviner. Look to the one who sees all, the treasure is hidden in her camp. If Madam Ava is the one that is giving this one out, specifically if you are at the Sarah Pool encampment, she will also add to this, I think the treasure is under my very nose. Now after getting this, and if your players talk to Madam Ava, Madam Ava will go ahead and allow the players to go ahead and search around the camp. And after a small little search, they will find the item that they seek. Why do the Vistani have this item? Is it because the Vistani want to end Strahd's curse upon this land? Did Strahd give the Vistani this item thinking that they would protect him? Or did Strahd give away this item out because deep down he wants his curse to end? There's a lot of ways you can spin this one. I like the approach that the Vistani have this item and they are waiting to give it to someone who has destiny on their side. And it is now your party's turn. Three of stars. Enchanter. I see a kneeling woman. A rose of great beauty plucked too soon. The master of the marsh knows of whom I speak. This is an interesting item. This is located in the ruins of Berez. And if any of your players ask around about a marsh, then some people go ahead and point out that, yeah, there is a marsh down there to the south. Your players go there, and after searching around for a bit, they'll encounter a ghost. The ghost of Burgomaster Laszlo Ulrich can go ahead and point them out to the statue of Marina. This is a very unique encounter that your players will be getting into. They arrive to that statue, and of course they can learn a bit about Irina's background in the form of Tatiana's spirit. And also they can discover a strange thing. Your players uncover the item that they seek after a DC-15 strength check, and unfortunately some distended corpses are going to start swarming them. These descended corpses, when they take damage and are reduced to 0 HP, all of a sudden swarms of poisonous snakes will disgorge from their bodies. Pretty gross. Did Strahd's hate manifest in these distended corpses protecting the item located at Marina's statue? Is this Baba Lysaga's doing? Perhaps there are some evil druids all about. I personally like the idea of evil druids protecting this area and forgetting about this oh so long ago and just leaving these corpses to do the bidding. Four of stars, Abjur. I see a fallen house guarded by a great stone dragon. Look to the highest peak. The item your players seek is all the way there at the very, very top of Argen Vashtult. And the only way to get here is by battling through some of the undead that guard this place. For this item, I would go ahead and say that perhaps one of the Holy Order of the Silver Dragon placed the item here just to ensure that people see the land for what it truly is of this dark despairing land and see this beacon unlit and hopefully that'll propel people to go ahead and do what is necessary to light the beacon yet again. Perhaps Vladimir Horngard did this before he slowly succumbed to his anger. Perhaps Sir Godfrey Gwilym did this. Five of stars, Elementalist. The treasure is hidden in a small castle beneath a mountain guarded by amber giants. 
The item your players seek is located in area 20 of the Amber Temple, where your players will be able to see a replica of Castle Ravenloft. The interesting thing to note here is that the only way your players will be able to get to the item that they need, they must smash their way through Castle Ravenloft, which can be a fun bit of symbology. Why is the item located at the heart of this miniature Castle Ravenloft? How was it built there in the first place? Was the castle built around it? Or perhaps this was somehow manipulated by some magic? Did Exithanter place it here before he lost his memories? There's certainly a lot of fun theories on how the item got all the way in here. Six of Stars, Evoker. Search for the Crypt of a Wizard Ordinaire. His staff is the key. This item will take your players all the way to Crypt number 37, where your players will be able to spot Growmore Nimble Knobs, Wizard Ordinaire, located right there. So. Just a quick search around the catacombs, your players will be able to find this no issue. Once inside, your players will have to take Groundmore's staff and place it against the stone slab. However, the interesting thing here is, if they put the wrong side on, then they will take 4d10 points of lightning damage. Pretty bad, but if they go ahead and put the right side of the staff on, then the slab will lift open. Your players will be able to get some good loot in there in regards of some scrolls, and of course they'll find the item that they seek. Did Strahd place the item here purely as a troll to get some people to electrocute themselves? Or did Gromor have this thing in life and was interred with it? Perhaps the fortune that your players seek was Gromor's most treasured possession in his lifetime. Seven of Stars, Illusionist. A man is not what he seems. He comes here in a carnival wagon. Therein lies what you seek. So what was very interesting about this is not only does this give you insight on Rictavio's true form in Rudolf Van Richten, but it also tells your players that there may be something up with this carnival wagon. Now, it states here that the carnival wagon can be found in the village of Vallaki, but depending on the course of your campaign, of course, Rictavio could be moving about. He may have gotten kicked out of Vallaki. He may be going ahead and going other locations, in which case you're going to have to keep that in mind. The item is in Rictavio's possession, and Rudolf Van Richten has this item because he planned on using it against Strahd, Whatever item this may be, the information from the book, the Holy Son of Ravenkind, the Sun Sword. But if your players explain their destiny, then he may be willing to go ahead and give it up. Now, where did Rudolf Van Richten get this item before it was in his possession? That I would go ahead and leave up to some other card reading. Perhaps Rudolf Van Richten got a card reading oh so long ago, and his fortunes led him there. But he has since strayed from the path and done some terrible things to the Vistani, and thus his destiny is now mute in regards of the Vistani card reading. Eight of Stars, Necromancer. A woman hangs above a roaring fire. Find her, and you will find the treasure. This one's a little bit scary. Your players may be thinking that there's some, you know, witch burning or something going on here. But once your players actually arrive to Castle Ravenloft, then hopefully they'll stumble across the study, and they can go ahead and find their way there. Of course, an easy way to find where this location is, is if your players ask any of the cast of Castle Ravenloft, perhaps they can go ahead and say, oh yes, there is a image of Tatiana above the fireplace in the study, and it's a beautiful one. The item that they seek is located right there at the mantelpiece underneath the portrait of Tatiana. Once again, I think this is just Strahd simply placing the item there right in front of Tatiana, and he doesn't really care because... He has it there, and if the players are good enough to get it, then that doesn't matter because Strauch is going to take it later anyway. Nine of Stars, Conjurer. I see a dead village, drowned by a river, ruled by one who has brought great evil into this world. So once again, sometimes the verbal text is really going to help out the players here. A dead village, they're going to learn that that is Berez. Drowned by a river, easy peasy way to find out. Ruled by one who has brought great evil into the world. Of course, that is referring to Babalai Saga, as she did, in fact, bring Strahd into this world, but not by birth, of course. The item your players seek is located in the chest located in Babalai Saga's Creeping Hut. That is a major issue because Babalai Saga, more often than not, is going to be antagonistic toward the party, and your players are going to have one heck of a fight if they go up against not only Babalai Saga, but also her Creeping Hut. So how the heck do your players get to this thing? Well, if you can't beat them, sometimes you gotta join them. Perhaps your players are going to have to work out some elaborate deal with Babalai Saga in regards of dealing with some were-ravens or dealing with some other threat that is opposed by Strahd. Perhaps your players can go ahead and say, hey, we're going to use this item to help Strahd. And with some deal-making and uh, some negotiating, they could perhaps walk away with some incredibly powerful item. If they are going down the route of making a deal with Babalai Saga, that 
deal should be magically impactful and it should be extremely detrimental to the players if they do not uphold their end of the bargain. Master of Stars, Wizard. Look for a wizard's tower on a lake. Let the wizard's name and servant guide you to that which you seek. This can really help out the players with that information because carved into the lintel above the door on the Van Richten's tower is Kazan. So that can really help out some people. The item your players seek is located behind the animated statue and is there where that info from the verbal card reading will help out. If they speak aloud the word Kazan and instruct the armor to retrieve the item, it'll go ahead and do so. It'll just go ahead and pull it out right for you and hand it to you. Of course, your players could have gone ahead and blown up Van Richten's tower, in which case they will have to search amongst the rubble. Your players will find the treasure after 1d8 plus 2 hours of searching through the rubble. For each hour they spend, they have a 10% chance of accidentally unearthing a clay golem. And this clay golem will go ahead and fight until it is destroyed. Of course, something to note here is that there was only four clay golems here. So in the incredibly unlikely event you keep on rolling low enough to get that to happen, make sure that you cap it out at four golems. Now, even though this is Van Richten's tower and he resides within here, he probably doesn't know about that item. So that would be an interesting thing here if your players arrive here and either Esmeralda or Rudolph Van Richten are here and your players say, hey, there's an item located here. We need to search high and low for it. And they can go ahead and start peeling away at the walls, floors, ceilings, whatever to find it. One of coins, swashbuckler. I see the skeleton of a deadly warrior lying on a bed of stone flanked by gargoyles. This is yet another one that is leading our players down to the catacomb. So the nice one about this is your players won't have to open up the door. Your players can see that the crypt is open. However, once they make the right side, they are going to be assailed by Endorovich's spirit, which is going to manifest in these two spirit gargoyles that are going to attack the party. Your players will have to deal with both of these gargoyles, and then they'll be able to grab the item no problem. Now, it doesn't specifically state you have to deal with the spirit gargoyles in order to get the item, but it does state that in order to get the item, it is contained in a secret compartment under Endoverch's remains, and once the bones are swept away, your players can find a no issue. So that does make me think that there is a bit of a time element to this. You can go ahead and say that it's able to get swiped in the span of a round, but then that may incur some sort of a tax of opportunity or, of course, just an angry spirit that's going to say, hey, come back here. And I think a really good story to tell with Endorovich here is perhaps Endorovich in his enraged fueled life. Strahd gave him the item in his possession to try and quell his anger. However, he took his anger to the grave. Two of coins. Philanthropist. Look to a place where sickness and madness are bred. Where children once cried, the treasure lies still. This is going to lead your players all the way to the Abbey of St. Markovia. And specifically, this is going to take us to Area 23, the nursery. So realistically, the only way to get through the nursery here is by going through the hospital wing itself. In which case, they will probably be jumped by a swarm of shadows, which could prove very deadly. But your players will be able to make their way inside of the nursery and there... And amongst one of the destroyed cribs, they will find the item, which is definitely a little bit of a harder story to tell. Why is the item hidden amongst a destroyed and battered crib? Well, you could say that at some point, a commoner got their hands on this item and tried stealing it away from Strahd's domain. And a long, long time ago, they came through here. And unfortunately, some bad things went down in this nursery and the item was left and long forgotten. Three of coins. Traitor. Look to the wizard of wines. In wood and sand, the treasure hides. This one just tells you straight up the location. You know, this is definitely one of the much, much easier ones to find. So the item is not only easy to find the location because it tells you it's the Wizard Wines Winery, but also just looking through the sand. Your players go through this location and there in the glass blower's workshop, your players will be able to look around and feel around the barrel of sand and they'll get the item dug up. This is a very easy item to sell to your players because this is probably taken by the Keepers of the Feather. And the Keepers of the Feather were able to stash away this item and keep it hidden from everybody. Because who would honestly be searching around a barrel full of sand, right? So the Keepers of the Feather are keeping this item in store here and waiting for the right group of adventurers to come through here. Four of Coins, Merchant. Seek a cask that once contained the finest wine, of which not a drop remains. So this one is actually much, much harder to come through because your players get told wine and they could think it's the Wizard Wines Winery. And they could think it's any one of the many taverns. It could be located in some rich person's basement. This one definitely could be all over the place. But once they finally learn the information that it is located in Castle Ravenloft, 
they come through here and unfortunately they may be in for a bad time because the item that they seek is located in the wine cellar you probably just have to go through the arduous process of getting into the wine cellar itself but once they start opening up these casks they could be unlucky and open up one of the casks that contains the brown mold or they could accidentally unleash a black pudding upon them so getting this item could prove very very difficult one thing I would strongly recommend is if your players are having a tough time trying to find this location, go ahead and maybe say, Oh yes, we heard that Castle Ravenloft once spouted the most magnificent wine cellar in all the land. And hopefully that can prompt your players to go in there. So once your players actually arrive, why is the item located in a wine barrel? Well, once again, that could be just Cloven Bellevue just getting up to his usual routines of being weird and placing items where they shouldn't be. Or perhaps the wine sommelier oh so long ago encountered the item and decided to hide it here and wait for someone to help out, but no help would arrive for them. Five of Coins, Guild Member. I see a dark room full of bottles. It is the tomb of a guild member. <laughs> that's a little bit on the nose right guild member it's the tomb of a guild member but hopefully this will get your players down to the catacombs in which case your players will have to go to crypt number five this is once again another extremely easy one to find your players just start searching around the catacombs and there they can find artanks vilovich friend and member of the barovian vine distillers guild so hopefully your players just start looking around they see this no issue they open it up and there inside, they'll see mountains and mountains of bottles. They start searching around the bottles, and there they will find the treasure automatically. Very easy stuff. Much like all the other ones located in the catacombs here, perhaps Strahd gave this item to this drunk in life and carried it with him to the grave. Six of Coins. Beggar. A wounded elf has what you seek. He will part with the treasure to see his dark dreams fulfilled. So this is a very nice tie-in to a major quest in this campaign. Your players, one, hear Elf, and if they've been around Barovia a little bit, they'll discover, oh yeah, there is really only humans here. So being told that you're going to be helping out an Elf can be pretty cool. But also that second part, he will part with the treasure to see his dark dreams fulfilled. This is a very nice tie-in. Your players are going to learn, okay, we're going to have to do a quest for this person, but what exactly is this quest? If your card reveals that the treasure is here, it is in Casimir's possession. He relinquishes it to the characters on the promise that they will accompany him to the Amber Temple and help him find a way to bring back his sister from the dead. So this is really nice exposition that you get to go ahead and give to your players. Casimir will say, hey, I've got this item here. It could be the book, the holy symbol, or the sword. And he'll say, hey, I will give this to you if you help me. We have to go ahead and go all the way to the Amber Temple, find something, and then we're going to go to Castle Ravenloft. So when does Casimir give away this item? Here it states specifically that he relinquishes the item if the characters promise to accompany him. So does that mean your players at an oh so early level could say, yeah, we'll totally go in a little bit and give us the item, and you give it? Or do you have Casimir say, hey, I will give it to you once we arrive at the Amber Temple? I personally like the idea of Casimir holding on to this thing, and ensuring that the party is going to accompany him because he wants more than anything to bring his sister back from the dead. Now Casimir coming into possession of this item is a pretty easy sell. Casimir has been here since the beginning. He is hundreds of years old. So he's presumably spent a decent amount of time traveling or just meandering about. He's seen adventurers come and go and perhaps one of the many adventuring parties that came around here uncovered this item oh so long ago and it's been in Casimir's possession ever since. And now that he's receiving dreams from his sister, he is going to use that as a bargaining chip to get what he wants. Seven of Coins. Thief. What you seek lies at the crossroads of life and death among the buried dead. So your players could have already passed through here, specifically if they've already been to the Sarah Pool encampment. And this could be just a very easy backtrack to go ahead and find because they hear the word crossroads. Oh hey, didn't we just pass by a crossroads that's got a graveyard in it? This is actually a pretty easy item to retrieve. So your players make their way to the Crossroads Graveyard and they start searching around and they don't find anything on the surface. So they're probably going to go ahead and have to start digging this place up. In which case they may have to go ahead and start using some magic or some shovels or some good old dandy handiwork to go ahead and unearth the graves. Each grave the character digs up, there's a cumulative 10% chance of finding the treasure. So here's the thing. Your players come to this graveyard and there really isn't that much of value to note here. So what I'd go ahead and do is I would strongly recommend that whatever grave your players uncover, 
that one have a tombstone on it and that tombstone ties your players to the world whether that be the name of some individual that your players are going to meet at some point someone they've already met someone tied to their backstory or maybe even one of them have it tied to the world and make it unique because your players go ahead and just start uncovering a whole bunch of random tombstones that's kind of boring but uncovering the one tombstone that has some pertinence to this world could be interesting Especially if you want to go ahead and foreshadow something such as Vasily von Holtz, Eight of Coins, Tax Collector. The Vistani have what you seek. A missing child holds the key to the treasure's release. So the treasure is located in the Vistani camp located outside of Velaki. The missing child is referring to Arbel because your players are only going to have access to this item if they go ahead and help out the Vistani. And the Vistani are in need of something. Of course, Arbel has gone missing. So the item your players seek is located in the Vistani treasure wagon in area 9i. So theoretically, if your players are murder hobos, they can absolutely just go ahead and just get to this thing. They can theoretically go ahead and steal their way into this thing. But of course, the easiest way to do it is by helping out Arabel. The fun thing to note about this lock is that there are two keyholes for this. Luvash carries one key and Argel the other. Each lock is rigged with a poison needle trap, which could prove deadly if someone tries to open up this thing and they are not dexterous enough. So, of course, the text here can be a little misleading. The Vistani have what you seek. If your players are in the Vistani camp at the Sarah Pool, they may think, that, okay, is it right here then? No, unfortunately, you're going to have to search elsewhere. You can go ahead and point out that there is another Vistani camp located not too far away, all the way near the village of Velaki, in which case your players will go ahead and search there. And it's there where your players will be told, Oh yes, we're missing someone, and then your players will know, oh, it's a missing child. We'll go ahead and help you out, and then you can help us out. In which case, a happy father will easily abide by anyone who saves their daughter. Nine of Coins, Miser. Look for a fortress inside a fortress, in a place hidden behind fire. So I talked about this during the Castle Ravenloft series, but finding that secret door behind the fireplace, realistically, is actually pretty hard if people aren't looking for it. But if they get told this in particular, look for a fortress inside a fortress behind a fire, that can easily tip them off. If your players go ahead and look around Castle Ravenloft, then any fireplace that they find, they can immediately start searching around the place. And specifically, if they go to the study, there they'll be able to see that there's a raging fire going on and start fooling around there. After searching around a little bit, your players can make their way over to Area 41, in which case they'll see that Darren's Instant Fortress, and of course, find all that amazing treasure hoard. Your players search around, and hidden amongst all that treasure hoard is the item your players seek. This one actually makes a lot of sense if Strahd didn't want anything to be in anybody's possession. It would make sense that it would be in a fortress behind a whole bunch of hidden doorways because presumably most people would not be able to find this. Master of Coins, Rogue. I see a nest of ravens. There you will find the prize. Once again, once again, this one is just absolutely no help at all, that verbal text, because your players are going to see that there are ravens all over the lands of Barovia. So how the heck are they going to know where to find this thing? Well, this is something that's probably going to reveal itself over time. Your players are going to interact with the world, and if they reveal themselves to the world that they are good aligned people trying to help out the world and kill Strahd, then perhaps the Keepers of the Feather are going to approach them and say, hey, we've actually got some business at the Blue Water Inn, and let's go ahead and discuss things. So if you have inquisitive people that look around the Blue Water Inn, they may in fact discover that there are some secret doors here, in which case they can actually find that there is a way to get all the way to the attic. And if they make their way up to that attic, they will find a whole bunch of nests for ravens, and they'll find a strong box. Inside of the strong box, your players will be able to get the item that they seek. Now, do your players need to be the one to go up there and get it? I don't think so, personally. I think that if the Keepers of the Feather have warmed up to the party, especially if they've done a number of quests for them, then Erwin can go ahead and just say, hey, wait one moment, goes up, grabs some items, he can go ahead and hand them some gold for their troubles, he can hand them some potions of healing, and he can hand them the item that they seek and say, hey, we've been storing this for a long time, and we know that you can go ahead and help us out. One of Glyphs. Monk. The treasure you seek is hidden behind the sun in the house of a saint. The treasure your players seek is located behind a golden sun disc hanging above the fireplace in the main hall of the abbey. 
So this is a very tough one to theoretically find because your players may see a whole bunch of sun symbols located around because your players see the light of Lathander shown all about here. And if your players go to the most holy place around here, Eric most holy place around here, they can go to the main hall, see that sun, and then say, hey, maybe there's something hidden behind there. Open it up, and not only do they get a potion of superior healing, but they also get that sweet, sweet item they've been coveting. So here's the real question. Do your players have to get combative with the Abbot of St. Markovia to get this thing? Or can they go ahead and pull off a caper? Or if your players are actually on the side of the Abbot, is the Abbot going to go ahead and give away the item? That is a unique one. I would go ahead and say that the Abbot doesn't want to kill Strahd because the Abbot thinks that curing Strahd is a lot better. So if it is the sword, then no, the Abbot's going to hide it away. And if it's the holy symbol, then maybe, maybe not. But if it's the book, then I would say yes. The Abbot would go ahead and give away the book because the book would go ahead and allow your players to uncover a bit of Strahd's past and the Abbot can go ahead and have some sympathy. The Abbot can say, hey, we saw this man fall from grace. Perhaps he can be restored. Two of Glyphs, Missionary. I see a garden dusted with snow, watched over by a scarecrow with a sackcloth grin. Look not to the garden, but to the guardian. This is going to take us to the gardens located at the Abbey of St. Markovia. Because your players have been told to look for the guardian, not the garden, your players may go ahead and start feeling around all of these scarecrows. The interesting thing here is your players can go ahead and find the item out of the gullet of the southernmost scarecrow, but if the treasure is removed, seven whites are going to erupt from the gardens and attack. They wear a tattered livery of Strahd's house. So here's the thing. Are these whites just simply waiting and waiting and waiting? It seems like it. Perhaps Strahd animated these things oh so long ago and instructed them to say, hey, guard this thing and make sure that no one walks away with it. So the thing about whites is they are not mindless undead. They are intelligent. In fact, these whites could theoretically be more intelligent or more wise than some people in your party. So is there a dialogue to be had here? I certainly think so. Perhaps the whites do just go ahead and attack, but perhaps there is some fun banter in the combat to be had. Perhaps the Whites are going to do everything in their power to attack whoever specifically took that item, in which case you can go ahead and have that fun theme of one person takes the item and then they get targeted above all else, and then that's going to leave them petrified. Three of Glyphs, Healer, look to the west, find a pool blessed by the light of the White Sun. So the interesting thing here is the verbal text tells us to look for the pool, but unfortunately the item is located in the gazebo. And not on top of the gazebo, unfortunately it is underneath the gazebo. The gazebo must be torn down in order to reach it, and doing so does not sit well with the locals. If the characters damage the gazebo and don't repair it in any way, charisma checks are made a disadvantage whenever people try to interact with the people of Kresk. So this is a tough one here because unfortunately most people wouldn't have the capabilities of fixing things. More often than not, PCs are pretty good at destroying things but not fixing things. So how do your players figure out that the item is hidden underneath the gazebo? Naturally, if I get the text of find a pool blessed by the light, then I will go ahead and start swimming around the pool. In which case your players may go ahead and go to elaborate lengths to go ahead and start looking around. What I would expressly tell is once your players arrive to the pool of Kresk, have a ray of light break through the cloudy sky above and specifically shine onto the gazebo and make it so that the light is almost piercing the gazebo. And hopefully that will inform your players that there's something to be had there with the gazebo and not with the pool itself. Now why is the item hidden underneath the gazebo? Perhaps St. Markovia did it herself oh so long ago? Perhaps Lathander hid it there oh so long ago? Who knows? Four of Glyphs, Shepherd. Find the mother, she who gave birth to evil. So your players may instinctively think, okay, that is Strahd's mom. But if they don't know anything about the history of the land, then that could be an issue because one, they could think, okay, that's Queen Ravnovia. But if they've already met with Babalai Saga and talked to her, she may have cryptically said that I am Strahd's mom, in which case your players are going to have a bit of an issue here. If they think that they have to deal with Babalai Saga, then that could lead down to some fun times. But unfortunately, the item they seek is not with her. They will have to go to Queen Ravnovia's tomb, located all the way down in the catacombs. So what's interesting here is, it is a bit of an issue to get to Queen Ravnovia's tomb itself, but once you arrive, the treasure you seek lies atop Queen Ravnovia's coffin, not in it. So... Why is this item seemingly just sitting out here in the open? I personally don't think that Strahd would leave an item out there on top of his own mother's tomb. I think someone placed it here. Who was that person? 
Perhaps it was Rahadeen. Maybe one of Strahd's brides. Maybe Cyrus Bellevue was having a bit of a laugh. Who knows? I like the idea of someone, at some point, however, coming down here and just placing this right there, knowing that Strahd wouldn't interact with it. Five of Glyphs. Druid. An evil tree grows atop a hill of graves where the ancient dead sleep. The ravens can help you find it. Look for the treasure there. What's interesting about this one is the ravens can help you find it. What that tells us is that any were ravens encountered in the wilderness can lead the players to this location. So the were ravens know for a fact that the item that the players seek is all the way up there at Yester Hill. So why do the were ravens know that for a fact? I like the idea that the were ravens had this item in their possession, but then the evil druids stole it oh so long ago and they now place it underneath the Gulthias tree. So your players get directed to go to Yester Hill and all the way at the Gulthias tree. After dealing with all the crazy shenanigans there, there they can find beneath the skeleton of that dead adventurer, you can find the item, no issue. So not only do I like the tale of the druids stealing this item and placing it underneath the Gulthias tree, I like the idea that these were ravens actually told someone else about this item, and unfortunately for them, they met an untimely end. Should your players ask about this dead adventurer, the were ravens could say, oh yes, they were a mighty warrior, and in fact they had an item that could slay evil plants, but unfortunately they were overwhelmed. Six of Glyphs, Anarchist. I see walls of bones, a chandelier of bones, and a table of bones. All that remains of enemies long forgotten. It's probably going to scare some players if they hear about this. Should you players explore around Castle Ravenloft, they can find the Hall of Bones. Bones everywhere. And here, fortunately, the item isn't too difficult to get to. The item reveals that it is located right there on the table. Not that hard to get. Of course, it is hard to get through Castle Ravenloft and all that, but that is, of course, its own set of issues. Once again, I think this is a Cyrus original here. I think Cyrus Bellevue probably just grabbed the item and placed it here just because placing this item here made it look cool amidst all the bones. Seven of Glyphs, Charlatan. I see a lonely mill on a precipice. The treasure lies within. This is not terribly difficult for your players to find as when they explore around the land of Barovia, there is only one mill and it's here, the old bone grinder. Your players start looking around and of course they'll uncover that there are some people here and these people are actually hags. So the thing is, is do the hags know for a fact that the item is located all the way up in the attic? You can play it two ways. If they do know that the item is here, then they are going to protect it because they don't want to earn Strahd's wrath by letting this thing go. But what happens if they don't know about this item? Perhaps it's just located here and has been locked away for some time by some previous owners and hasn't been touched upon. In which case, your players can theoretically come in here, steal a thing, and get out no issue. Of course, dealing with the coven has its own tremendous set of issues. Eight of Glyphs. Bishop. What you seek lies in a pile of treasure beyond a set of amber doors. Your players get told, hey, there's an amber temple. Oh, of course, it must be up there. The item that they seek is located down the stairs in Area 40, the Treasure Hoard. Your players can access this either one of two ways, either through the double door in the front, or they could go ahead and sneak through the back. Either way, it has its own set of issues because guarding this vault is a Amber Golem, and if they bust through that open door, then unfortunately they are going to get set upon by not only an Amber Golem, but an invisible Amber Golem. Incredibly deadly. The item they seek is located in one of these six random piles. You can just roll a d6 for this pile. So, of course, if your players get told about this, then they go ahead and start searching around the piles. I mentioned this in the Amber Temple video, but searching through an enormous treasure pile would take an enormous amount of time. So it makes sense that if the item that they seek is buried in here, you would have to spend a long time sorting through all of it, counting out all the gold, looking at all the items. It would take a long time, so if the item is located in any one of these random things, then the PCs are going to spend hours and hours sorting the thing out. Once they find the item, it's right there in their possession. Easy peasy, no issue. Nine of Glyphs. Traitor. Look for a wealthy woman, a staunch ally of the devil. She keeps the treasure under lock and key with the bones of an ancient enemy. So your players could theoretically discover that the item is in Lady Walker's house if they hear look for a wealthy woman, because unfortunately there isn't that many wealthy women in this campaign. But here's the thing. Your players could get into a roleplay sense with Lady Walker and think that she is a good person, that she's not a staunch ally of the devil. And if they only have that small amount of rapport, they may immediately go ahead and not associate with that. However, over the course of the campaign, once Lady Walker's intentions come clear, she should state verbatim that she is a staunch ally of Strahd's. 
And if she says those exact words, then your players are going to understand her motivations. So once your players get the inkling that the item is located here, then your players can go ahead and start searching around and they're going to be in for a terrible time because when they explore around this house, they may get into a fight with some skeletons, they may find out that there's a crazy cat girl, and they may discover that there's a dead body just lying in a bed. Once they make their way into this room, there they can open up a chest which has a poison needle trap, and if they go ahead and open it up, they can find the bones of an ancient enemy. Leo de Lisnia. Leo was one of the soldiers on the day that Strahd killed Sergei, and thus he tried killing Strahd. So, for a lot of the roleplay ones, it would make sense that if your players built up a rapport with a character, that they would go ahead and hand over an item. However, she believes in Strahd, and thus, why would she ever give away an item to be used against Strahd? I personally don't think that, as written, Lady Walker would have any reason to give away the sword or the holy symbol, but perhaps she could go ahead and hand over the Tome of Strahd and say, hey, you go ahead and read this, maybe you and me will come to an understanding, and maybe you'll finally give up this whole fighting Strahd thing. Master of Glyphs, Priest. You will find what you seek in the castle, amid the ruins of a place of supplication. Your players are going to know that is Castle Ravenloft, and a place of supplication is the chapel. So this item is not terribly difficult to get to. Your players can just make their way through that front door of Castle Ravenloft, literally just go straight down the hall, and there they'll be in the chapel, and just behind the altar they can find the item that they seek. Your players may get a bit confused, however, because if your players make their way in here, one of the first things that they'll spot is the icon of Ravenloft, and they may think that that is the item that they're seeking. It might not line up if they get told that there's a sword, however... <laughs> But if the item they're looking for is the symbol of Ravenkind, they may think that the icon of Ravenloft is the one and the same. Of course, bad things can happen if they touch that, so they may go ahead and start looking around, and there behind, they'll find the item that they're truly looking for. This item may have been placed here on purpose, however, another conclusion could be that the priest that was located here and is dead here may have dropped it by accident behind here when he got zapped by the icon of Ravenloft. And just like that, we're done with all of the item locations in the Taroka deck. There is a lot of amazing things you can do with that. You can see to so many locations that your players would normally never explore. You can give out so many quest hooks to drive your players to these locations. You can have them spread out all over the world, or you can have them all located in one spot. You can decide everything, or you can leave it completely up to chance. I personally leave it up to chance because I'm crazy, but I know a lot of people like to rig the deck. Either way is perfectly fine. You just have to work with what you have. And of course, you have to sit there and read that verbal text and think to yourself, is there any conceivable way anybody would actually be able to find this? If not, then you're going to have to go ahead and seed some clues in. Don't give anything away too easily, but make sure they have to work for it. Make sure they, they ask the right people the right questions and they can show up to the right place at the right time. This Taroka reading is ingrained in the history of Ravenloft, specifically going all the way back to I-6 Castle Ravenloft. Of course, back then, all the items were practically located in the castle itself, because the adventure was a lot shorter, of course. But now that we have this expanded world, you can go ahead and expand out however much you want. Do you want your players to deal with the werewolves? In which case, go ahead and place it all the way over there. Do you want your players dealing with the druids? Send it over there as well. Do you want to give your players an actual hook to go to the Amber Temple? Then not only could you have the item there at the Amber Temple, but you can have them deal with Casimir. You can loop in so many NPCs in so many locations with this card reading, there really is no limit to how modular this campaign is. So go ahead and tell me, do you rig the deck or do you leave things completely up to chance? How much info do you give your players? Do you give them a lot to work with, or do you only give them the verbal text and that's that? They have to find out the location in the world themselves. Go ahead and tell me all these things because I want to know. That's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you to all my amazing patrons up here. You guys are absolutely incredible. Thank you so very much. That is going to do it for me. Thank you so much for listening, and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one.